All right, so our first practice today is gonna to be with a brick. Now, if you find that you've got a really stiff upper back, don't worry. Make sure you've got a brick or something similar. You can use um, a tin can of beans or something like that to push into your back. You can use that. Um, maybe you might want to put a blanket over the top of it. So I'm presuming you've all got equipment of some description. So what you're going to do is to go over this brick. Now those of you who find it really challenging to cross your legs, don't worry, you don't have to have your legs crossed, you can have them straight. So I'm just going to rest my back body onto this support like this and then extend back. Now I don't want to make a big deal of it, I don't want to go too high with the chest, I want the back of the head down. Now if that's not happening, Mm. then you will need to have some support underneath your head. So if the back of the head is not on the floor and you're like that, then you want to see, you have something to give you some support. So this is really about getting that connection, getting that understanding that you can just get that opening in your chest. So you want to try to work at completely releasing the back of the shoulders towards the floor side. So some of you who find this a little bit challenging, then use a blanket. So we're gonna be in this position, so hopefully you're in it or you're just going into it now. Be sure that when you come into this action that you're not straining your neck or head, this isn't um, a Dweeva Prita Dandasana, it is very much about getting that opening in your chest, it's just a practice. Those of you who find it difficult to cross your legs, have your legs straight, no problem at all. And when you're there, just let the shoulders release. So you wanna spend a little bit of time getting the back of the shoulders releasing. It's almost like you've just gotta mentally, physically go into that area and let it go. It's one of our most challenging areas because actually we react with our shoulders. We have some news, our shoulders go up. We get cross, we get upset, our shoulders go up. So just see that the back of the shoulders, the back of the shoulder area falls in. So you're really trying to smooth that area, trapezius muscle long, and coming into in this action. So for some of you, it will be nice, and for some of you, you will find it quite challenging. All right, those of you with straight legs, just keep where you are, you can just continue. Those of you with bent legs, then, or cross legs, then you come into the other cross. You can change the cross while you're there and just feel the difference in the pelvis. You want to, again, see that you readjust be sure the back of the head is either to the floor but supported or on a blanket, whatever you're using. And then just let the back of the shoulders completely, completely release. Take a couple of breaths and just take your mind into the back of the shoulder region and let it go. Let it go. Let it release. Yeah. Keep in that action. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. A nice deep inhalation so that you are letting go on the exhalation. Okay, well done. And now releasing. All right, so come up. Come up into a seated position. All right, so we've got one more preparation. Now this is gonna involve a chair. Now you can use any chair you've got handy. I'm gonna use a yoga chair. If you haven't got a yoga chair, they're really good to have, and also they fold up so you can slip them under a bed or in a wardrobe or, or you know, they're, they're quite manageable. So now, if you're dropping in your dandasana, this is not a good action. You want to see that you're lifted. It might be that you have to lift onto a foam pad like this 
to hold on to the back of the chair. So we're having a little bit of support when we come into our Dandasana today. So I'm just on a foam pad, but you can go on the floor if you can get that really nice action. So I'm just gonna hold somewhere comfortable on the chair and just see. It might be that the chair is really strong and if you push into it, it's not gonna push away. Now I'm putting a little bit of weight into where I'm connecting with the chair legs. So I'm not holding it to push, I'm pushing the chair legs away. So fortunately, my chair's not doing a run <laughs> to the other side of the room. It's working quite well. Now, when I'm here, you can see my palms are open. My thumbs are actually just coiled around the chair leg. Now, when I'm here, I want to see that I get breadth and broadness. So I want to get this opening. And then once I get that opening, I can adopt that action that I had on the brick. So I want to lift up and over that brick and breathe. So this action needs to come. So it's a soft inhalation and exhalation, but you really are connecting with the upper body. You really are connecting with the upper body. So as you go more and more in with the dorsal spine, you'll be able to go down further with the roots of the thigh. And this is really where you want to be in this position. It's tough. It's tough stuff. Okay, be there. Just hold it for a few more moments, extending into your heels, extending into the legs of the chair. Okay, now see if you can maintain it and put your fingers to the floor. Can you maintain it? So much nicer, isn't it, when you've got the chair there. All right, so what you're going to do now is to have a couple of bricks. I'm going to move my chair away because I don't need it at the moment. Let's pop that up there. All right. So, some of you will know where this is going to. <laughs> All right, so you can see just by me placing these bricks here, you know that actually we're coming towards Purvatasana. So this is a really nice pose. You wanna see that all of those qualities are in your back. Now don't drop your upper back. This has got to lift up and over. Can you see how much I'm lifting up? up and over that brick in the first practice. Again, up and over that brick. And again, up and over that brick. You've really got a lot of work going on here. And then see, can you lift up? And then release down. So you don't wanna hold it for too long because the work is in this area. So this time I want you to get all the work, but I want you to really squeeze in with these back muscles. So when you're here, again, we have to go through the process as if we're going up over that brick and we're extending up a little bit more, a little bit more, extending into the heels. Now, what happened when you were on the chair legs? You lift it up even more. So as you push those elbows away, you'll find that there may be quite a lot of burning work going up into those trapezius muscles. And then push into your bricks and lift for pervatasana. Let the head release. And then releasing down. So, such a lot of work in Purvatasana. All right, so now we've got the idea that we are using this upper back. So what we're going to do now is to come forward here. So when we come forward, we're coming for Bhujangasana. So Bhujangasana is really a challenging action. So when you're here, you want to see that when you come to this point, 
you are trying to lift over the brick. So you just come to the first stage, try not to activate this lower back area. So, firstly, let's fold our arms for a moment. Rest your forehead onto your forearms and let the lower legs start to extend away from you but also at the same time you want to see that the leg is weighting down into the floor and this weighting down will help you to roll the buttock flesh from the inside out and this is really what you want you want to see that this buttock flesh releases so that it releases the spine this way all right once we get that idea then we're going to lift up again so when you lift up, you want to see that your hands are a little bit further back, not in front of the chest, but actually the fingers are to the front of the chest. So when you're like this, this is more or less the right measurement. Looking forward and then. Now, when you get to here, you want to get some sort of force from somewhere, some resistance. So you want to press into your hands, but see, can you lift up and over that brick? Up and over the brick. And then come all the way up. See if you can keep the legs to the floor. Look forward. And come up. So that is quite challenging. <laughs> quite challenging. All right and then releasing down. So if you felt a pinching in your back, which is quite normal because we are really overly connected in that lower back region, then you can roll a blanket like this. So if you've got a blanket or you can roll your mat, your mat would work. And you put it just above the pubic plate, just across the frontal hip flexors. And then you go again, and this will give you a little bit more space. And then you can again lift up with the brick. You've got to activate those upper back muscles. They've got to move in to open the chest. You can't just do this pose without opening your chest. You've got to find that brick in your back. Okay, so hopefully you've been working with it and doing it at the same time. We'll have one more go, so whatever round you're on, just release for a moment and then we will go again, all together though. All right, so just lie flat either on your support or on the floor. I would recommend either a rolled mat or a rolled blanket just underneath the pelvic rims. I think this will really give you a little bit of help. And then press into the hands. Now, as you come up, you want to see that these back muscles are really connecting. So the shoulder blades to spine and then lift all the way up if you can. So I know it's such a powerful pose. Bhujangasana, such a powerful, powerful pose. All right, and then releasing down, so you won't stay there too long. All right, so releasing down and just rest your fore, forehead onto your forearms. So just have this little bit of a resting time. Okay, just take a few breaths, just let the back muscles release again. Okay, let the abdomen soften, let the spine soften. And just take a bit of time to recover. A very strong action. All right, release him. Just have a look. Now you might need to have a foam pad and a brick or several foam pads and a brick or just a brick, depending. We're coming for Adam Krishnasana, but how we're going to be practicing this is by placing the hands, tucking the toes under, and then bringing the support quite close. Just go a little bit towards the forehead side, push into the palms and reach back. 
soften the belly. Breathe and reach back. So those of you who are in it, stay in it. Those of you who are just coming up, remembering that upper body work, you want to see that you get the access from the forehead being onto the support, the hands being in front, and you've got to see that you really push very strongly into the palms. So you reach through those arms, reach through the side waist, and extend the thighs back, yeah. So keep the thighs moving back quite strongly, keeping that action. Soft inhalation and exhalation once you're in the pose. Try to be in it, try to encourage the breath to work with the action. Okay, and now release in. Well, well. done. All right, so you're going to need to have a foam pad now. So you're gonna have a foam pad and then you may need to have a belt so just have a look because what we're coming for the pose we're going for is gomukhasana but slightly differently because we're coming into it in a vir virabhadrasana one action so when we come back to reach for our palm, it may be that you don't need the support, depending, reaching up, either catching or catching the belt. Whatever you were using really doesn't matter. Now, what I want you to do is to step back onto a foam pad like that, so it gives you a slightly longer back leg, and step the arm. So, the front arm, it's the same as the front leg, it's lifting up strongly. Got to lift the whole of that side. Now, the back arm grounds down, so it goes really at the same pace as the back pelvis. It's got to go down, got to go down. Lifting up with the arm, lifting up with the chest, keep that action and breathe. Ooh, strong. Now watch, you're going to see that you get all that shoulder work, and bend the leg, bend the leg. So you might feel a slight warmth coming in your arms maybe. And then coming up, release the arms and step forward, stand in Tadasana. Oh, stand in Tadasana, let those shoulder blades move in really deeply really deeply soft inhale and exhale okay so we're ready for the other side now so it may be that this side is a little bit more challenging it certainly is for my gumakasana so extending up so you might want to use a belt if you need it depending all right so we go to the other side now so extending the legs in this way keeping the legs straight for a moment now just be in this position pushing up with the arm and down with the lower arm back of the pelvis towards the back leg now try and get a good stance now as you go down lift up with that left arm lift up and bend that front leg move the shoulder blades in really deeply and keep that lift going keep that lift going go and see that you get all of those actions all of those actions really nicely drop into the action see that you come into your pelvis and push up with that top arm really nicely keeping that action okay <laughs> so strong isn't it all right and whoa, undo the arms now place your launch pad underneath your head so you're in this position all right so just rest in there just keep your legs bent keep your knees up towards the ceiling let the abdomen completely release Soft inhalation and exhalation. Mm. 
And for those of you who can, just straighten your legs for your Shavasana. So I'm going to leave you in your Shavasana today and um, hopefully you've enjoyed today's class and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Namaste.